Rather than synthesizing a sound, it's possible to have MIDI music tracks target sound SFX objects that reference audio files as their source. In addition, the sound SFX object can be configured to modify the pitch of the referenced file based upon the pitch of an incoming MIDI note message. This effectively provides a way to develop a sampler playback system. Besides the advantage of being able to use real-world sounds with MIDI sequences, it can potentially save a lot of memory as the same audio recordings can be referenced by countless MIDI sequences. To implement a sampler approach, we're going to use the Cube game project and work with the Boss D music segment, which has already been configured with some assets. We can see a primary music track referencing an audio file and a random step subtrack with five different MIDI sequence clips already imported. Let's take a listen. You're hearing the first track that has the main accompaniment, but if we solo the track below, the sequence track, we're not going to hear anything. Now, this is because it's not targeting an object that can render MIDI into sound. For this part of the implementation, we'll be referencing the first of these five subtracks. So I'm going to click the force usage button on it and zoom in a little bit. And we can see that the clip name and the track name reference an instrument called the suling, which is a type of bamboo flute from Southeast Asia. Individual recordings of notes being played on a suling at different pitches have been provided as separate audio files. These recordings will serve as the sound source for this MIDI track. The recordings need to be imported into a sound SFX object, which will then later become the target of the MIDI track. To set this up, we'll go to the designer layout. And then in the Actor Mixer hierarchy, we'll right-click the Music Work Unit, choose Import Audio Files, click Add Files, and for now we're just going to be using the Suling C Sharp 5 file. Go ahead and open it up and import it. And we'll see that it will be been added as a sound SFX object in the Music Work Unit. Now down below, in the interactive music hierarchy, we'll select the Boss D Sampler Suling 1 um, music track, and then in its MIDI tab, under MIDI Target, we'll click Override Parent, which will now allow us to drag the Suling C Sharp 5 Sound SFX object so that it can become the target of the MIDI sequenced track. Now let's go back to the interactive music uh, layout and take a look again at this first subtrack, and we'll play it. Now we hear the Suling play, but the two notes that we see here have different positions which indicate that they have a different pitch, but the sound that we heard produced the same pitch both times. Uh, this is because when a sound, SF ob uh, sound SFX object is targeted by a MIDI track, it interprets each MIDI note on message as a play command. However, by default, the pitch of the MIDI note is ignored, so in this case only the C sharp 5 pitch in the recorded audio file is played. We can fix this by adjusting a property in the MIDI tab of the target sound SFX object. And so we'll select it, and then under the MIDI tab, where it says Note Tracking, we'll click Enable. Now let's play it again. So now we hear multiple pitches. While there may be pitch variation, the note pitch that you hear may not match the MIDI note pitches contained in the MIDI sequence. In other words, the MIDI sequence may be playing note D3, but it's being heard as F sharp 3. The reason for this is because WISE raises or lowers the pitch of a sound by changing its playback speed. In order for WISE to make the right choice about how much to speed up or slow down, it needs to have a reference as to what the actual pitch of the sound is in the recording it's referencing. This reference is called the root note, which must be manually entered in the sound SFX object's property editor. And so we'll go ahead and set the root note, in this case, to C sharp 5. And we'll play it again.
Now the pitches we hear will match those of the notes recorded in the MIDI sequence. While the pitch of the Suling is now playing properly, every note played references the same audio recording. This can lead to an unnatural feel, as all of the nuances of every note played are all exactly the same. Also, when there's a large difference between the incoming MIDI note and the root note in the referenced audio file, the timbre of the sound can begin to sound unrealistic. Sampled instrument sounds work around this using an approach called multi-sampling. Multi-sampling means that many unique recordings are used to cover specific ranges of pitch. Configuring a multi-sampled instrument in WISE is possible as well, and we've already taken the first step to building this type of structure. The overall approach to setting up a multi-sampled instrument in WISE is to create a separate sound SFX object for each audio file that will be used in the multi-sampled instrument. The trick is to make it so that each sound SFX object only responds to MIDI notes that are within the range of notes intended for that single sound. To accomplish this, we'll use the MIDI filtering features available for a sound SFX object. For the Suling sound SFX object, notice below in the filters group box the key range value. This sets the range of notes that this particular sound SFX, ob sound SFX object will respond to. Set the filter's key range properties to say C sharp 5 for min and F5 for max. C sharp 5 and then F5. Now let's go ahead and play the track. Now here we can hear that some of the notes no longer play, as only the notes within the range where will, that we defined will be heard. For the Suling, a variety of recordings have been made with the musician playing specific pitches that can be brought in as unique sound SFX objects. For each of them, we'll need to repeat the overall concept we've done, but it can become quite tedious to do this when multi-sampled sounds could consist of hundreds of audio files. Instead of going through that process one by one, We'll speed things up by importing all of the audio files for the Suling into a blend container. Blend containers can play multiple sound SFX objects simultaneously, and they also have some features to make quick work of setting those filters. We'll start the process from scratch, so we'll go ahead and delete the object that we just created. And we'll go back, right click the Music Work Unit, choose Import Audio Files, but this time we'll click the Add Folders button. And then we'll navigate up to where the Bosti Suling Samples folder is that contains all the audio files we intend to import. Let's go ahead and select the folder. Now notice that by default, the folder in the file structure will be used to create a virtual folder uh, in the Project Explorer. Instead, we want to have the sound SFX objects contained within a blend container. This blend container will later become the MIDI target for the Bosti Sampling Suling Music track. So we'll change this first line to blend container. And then you can see the audio files below will be brought in as sound SFX objects. Let's go ahead and click import. Now here we see that a Boss D Suling uh, Samples blend container appears uh, in the Project Explorer. And the sound effects objects are contained within. Within a blend container lies a very helpful feature for adjusting the root note and filter properties of the sound SFX objects it contains. It's called the Key Map Editor. To access it, we just need to click the Boss D Suling Samples blend container. And then with it selected, make sure we're on the MIDI tab. Now here we can see the same MIDI settings that we saw in a sound SFX object. Uh, for this parent object though, we're going to leave the default values just as they are. But to adjust the settings of the contained objects, click the key editor, uh, key map editor button. Now we, here we see a list of each of the Suling Sound SFX objects contained within. The advantage of the key map editor is that we can see the common MIDI properties we've adjusted before for all of the individual objects contained in a nicely displayed single window. First, we need to go through the list and override MIDI note tracking in order to enable um, MIDI note tracking. And so to do this, we can select all of the contained objects. First click 
override MIDI note tracking, which now gives us the ability to click enable MIDI note tracking. And we can just click in the background to deselect the objects. The next step is the root note simply needs to be the same as the note referenced in the audio file name. And so for the root note, uh, we'll just do each of these. A sharp four. Now we need to look at the key range values. If the key ranges between uh, two sound SFX objects overlap, it's possible one MIDI note could play two audio files. For this reason, we'll set the key range min value to the same as the root note, and the key range max value should be set to one note below uh, the next note's key range min value. The problem is that uh, the list is in alphabetized order, and that's not the order that the notes would appear on a keyboard, and so this could be a little bit confusing. We can change that by clicking the column header for the MIDI tracking root note. All right, now we'll go in and adjust the uh, key range min and max values. So this first one, I'll leave the key range min set to C negative one, and then we'll set the max value to one note below the next note, which is G sharp four. So that means it will now be set to G four and so on. For this last note, we'll set the uh, min value to F sharp five. But we'll go ahead and leave the key range maximum value at G9 since there's no other samples for uh, any notes higher up in the scale. Now our last step is to reassign the Boss D Suling 1 music track to the Boss D Suling samples blend container. So we'll go ahead and close the key map editor and we'll select the, uh, the music track, and we'll just drag the Boss D Suling Samples blend container as the MIDI target. So now let's go ahead and play it, and let's hear what we have. Let's go back and take a look at the track we've been listening to. Great, and now all the notes have a distinctive audio file that's being referenced, adding to the realism, realism and minimizing the sonic redundancy. Now let's go ahead and hear it all together. 